Fight for your life. Most people think that when they go through something that it's all over for them. Oh, I ain't gonna make it. Oh, things are too hard. I, I can't see the light. Listen, even Job said it, it, it was it was it had been better for him even not to be born. Job was he was frustrated about what he was going through, and he even told his friends, I ain't did nothing to nobody. And they were like, Oh, you must have did something. But guess what? I understand where Job's word came in. I understand what he was going through in the human sense. But the good thing about Job, this is the good thing. He never gave up his faith in God. He never did. And so, well, I, I'm here to tell you that, that your suffering is going to help not just you, but it's going to help somebody else too. And, and this is why we're telling Job's story right now. Sometimes we have to go through some things so God can refine us. First Timothy 6 and 12, this is what it says. Fight the good fight of faith. Oh my God. Lay hold to eternal life whereunto thou art also called, and thou hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Higher Ground Christian Church. Hey. I'm Pastor James Ziegler. God bless you. It's good to see you this morning. I'm glad you're here. Listen, I, I have a sermon today I, I, that the Lord gave me that, that I, I really want to share with you guys. I won't hold you long. Listen, it, it's, it's, it's second Sunday in June, and, and this is a good day, uh, uh, June the 12th, and uh, let, let me let me pray first. How about that? Let me pray, and then we're going to move on. Lord, we thank you now for your, your grace, your mercy, and your kindness, God, your love, and your protection. You've been kinder to us than we've even been to our own selves, God, and we appreciate you. We ask that you cover our families, cover our kids, God. We'll cover, cover our homes, cover us on our jobs, God. We love you, and we appreciate you, and we, we thank you for everything that you ever done. God, even on today, God, let this word resonate with some of our lives, God, to even strengthen us and make us better to do your will god we give you glory we give you honor and we give you praise in jesus christ's name amen listen today uh, uh let me give you uh our vision statement real quick is colossians 3 uh 3 1 and 2 it says if then you have been raised with christ then you should seek the things that are above where christ is seated at the right hand of god and then he says set your mind on the things above and not on the things on this earth. I, I wholeheartedly believe in that. I think that's what we should do. And I think this is how we should live. So listen, uh, my sermon going to be real brief. Uh, well, I'm going to try to make it brief so, so you can go out and enjoy your day. But God wants you to hear this today. It, it comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 38, verses 15 through 17. Isaiah chapter 8, 15 through 17. Now, if you have your Bibles, go ahead and read along with me. But if not, here, let me just read it to you. It says, 15 says, but what can I say? He has spoken to me and he himself has done this. I will walk humbly all my years because of the anguish of my soul. Verse 16 says, Lord, by such things people live and, and my spirit finds life in them too. You restored me to health and let me live. Surely it, it was for my benefit that I suffered such anguish. In your love, you kept me from the pit of destruction and have put all my sins behind your back, God. Thank you, thank you. Listen, let me read it again and I'm gonna explain a little bit of it and I'm getting the sermon. It says, but what can I say? He has spoken to me, and I'm talking to you now, saying how God has spoken. Isaiah was saying, he has spoken to me, and he himself has done this, has done whatever you're going through, whatever your sickness is, if you may have lost something. He said, he himself has done this. Who is this? Who is he? God. I will walk on humbly all my years because of this anguish, because what I've been through, it made me want to change and walk better. And then verse 16 says, Lord, by such things people have lived. What, what does that mean? It's some other people that's going through what you've gone through. It's some other people that are sick. It's some other people that had some situations like you and then they lived. And it says that my spirit finds life in them too. You restored me back to health and let me live. 
Surely it was my benefit. Uh, it was for my benefit that I suffered such anguish. And get this, what you're going through is for your own benefit. In your love, you kept me from the pit of destruction. Thank you, God. And you have put all my sins behind your back. Today, the title of my sermon is Fight for Your Life. Fight for your life. Most people think that when they go through something, that it's all over for them. Oh, I ain't going to make it. Oh, things are too hard. I, I can't see the light. Listen, even Job said it, it, it was it was it had been better for him even not to be born. Job was he was frustrated about what he was going through. And he even told his friends, I ain't did nothing to nobody. And they were like, oh, you must have did something. But guess what? I understand where Job's word came in. I understand what he was going through in the human sense. But the good thing about Job, this is a good thing. He never gave up his faith in God. He never did. And so, well, I, I'm here to tell you that, that your suffering is going to help not just you, but it's going to help somebody else too. And, and this is why we're telling Job's story right now. Sometimes we have to go through some things so God can refine us. He wants others to look at you while you're going through so he can get the glory out of what he is doing in your life. He wants to get the glory. He wants other people to see it. But this doesn't mean why, why you're getting it and God's getting the glory and why he's fixing your life. And just like Job, he, he sat there and waited. This doesn't mean in that time that he's doing some things for you that you have free time to start throwing a pity party. Or, 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 or getting in this free moment to give up the fight. No, this ain't the time for that. This is the time to stand strong in what you're going through. Just when it looks like it's going to be over, God is able to make a way out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, I remember when they used to say, he, he'll make a way out of nowhere, but we have to keep the faith and don't give up and don't give in. The Bible says, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling. Through Christ Jesus, knowing that in the end, we will win. Let, let me tell you how we win. Can I, can I explain how, how we win? After we've taken a look at all the suffering and sorrow that's in the world, th this, this is what God says in Isaiah. After, after we've gone through so much killing, so much wars, uh, a sickness and COVID-19, uh, gas prices going up, the food prices going up. He said, after all these things that are going on in the world, Isaiah 41 and 10 says, fear not, <laughs> for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. This is what God is saying. The first thing on here, the way we win is beginning to say, fear not. Don't care nothing about all this stuff that's going on. I know, I know it can be hurtful, and I know some things are going on, but fear not. So I don't need you to be scared, but I need you to stand and fight like it's your last time. I need you to stand and fight like it's your, I need you to look at your situation just like Gideon did. It, it, it looks like it's only 300 of y'all and, and it's a thousand men after y'all. Armies coming from everywhere. But God's going to take something that, that doesn't even look like much to you. Like, like a piece of glass or a horn and, and some fire lights and, and make some noise and, 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 and still win. And, and so you may be having some witnesses that came through the same thing you've been through before. Yeah. Or, or you may hear some stories about what, how people then came out, or it may be some medicine that could help you. It may be some encouraging words from, and, and most, most definitely prayer. Yes. And all of this can save your life, <laughs> save your whole family. As a matter of fact, save your neighbors, save your friends and, 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 and stop all of this suffering. Yeah, he, he can do it. I don't know if you believe me, but I'm telling you, fight for your life. God, God is able to make a way. So, so, so what do we do, preacher, when, when we get a, in a state of depression and, and doubt? How, how do we come out of that? I'm glad you asked. In 1 Timothy 6 and 12, this is what it says. Fight the good fight of faith. Oh, my God. Lay hold to eternal life whereunto thou art also called and thou has professed a good profession before many witnesses. What does that mean, preacher? Can you tell me? He's saying fight the good fight of faith. You, it's your faith that's going to keep you. Fight for your life. You have the faith. Lay hold to eternal life. 
what God has for us. It says, where unto thou art called, you are called to have faith is what God is saying. And, and you profess this, a good profession before many witnesses, everybody that know, you know, you love God. So, so you said, you said, you said you love God, right? That's what you said. So why now do you doubt what he's able to do? Why, why would you doubt him now? Because you're going through something? Don't, don't stop now. You've been praising him and calling on his, his son's name too long not to understand what he's doing right now. You, you've been calling him. What's his name? Call his name. His name is Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. And when you call the name of Jesus, didn't you understand that he's a burden bearer? He, he's a heart fixer. He's a, a mind regulator. <laughs> he, he, he's what they call in the Bible, a wheel in, in the middle of a wheel. He, he, he's a battle axe in the time of battle. I, I was looking it up and I was reading some things. They call him El Shaddai. He's an almighty God. They call him Elohim. He, he's our creator. Odenai, my great lord abba he's the father who watches over us i, I looked at it and said they call him el elion lord of heaven and earth <laughs> he's he's yashua he's a deliverer and for some of y'all get this he's jehovah rapha he's a healer oh uh, well, won't he do it won't he make a way won't he heal some situations i i, I understand what you're going through but the, the, don't get me wrong i know what god is able to do if we know that he's all of these things that I just called out, and, and, and much more than that, mm -hmm. then, then why do you think he can't make a way for you? What, 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 yeah. what would make you think that he's not able to be Jehovah Rapha in your life? Who, 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 Elohim, what makes you think he's not these people? He's not El Shaddai. What makes you think he's not that to you? Why, why, why do we not trust God more? This, this is what I'm saying. His, he, he, we got to have faith. Put it in his hands and watch him do it. E e Exodus 23 and 25 says, worship the Lord your God and, and his blessing will be on your food and your water. I will take away sickness from you. Oh, yeah. let me read it again because y'all are not hearing what I'm telling you. It says, worship, worship the Lord your God. I don't care how you do it. In, in your spare time, in your car, it ain't just got to be in church in front of everybody. Do it. Do it earnestly. As a matter of fact, I preached a, a sermon last week called Stop Lying. Stop lying in front of folk like you worship. No, do it earnestly. And, and, you know, worship the Lord your God and his blessing will be on your food and your water. That means you need to eat and you need to drink. I will take away sickness from you. That's how you're going to get your strength. I remember I remember when the, the three Hebrew boys were, well, they were about to get thrown into the fire. Y'all remember that? And they stood strong. This is what they said. Our God will deliver us. They were, they were strong and said it. And they said, but if he doesn't, if, if he doesn't, it's not that he can't. <laughs> It's not that he can't do it. He can do it. He, he can make a way out of no way. From the rising of the sun go, to the going down of the same, I, I'm going to fight for my life. That's what, that's what I'm doing. Every situation that God put in my life, I'm going to fight for it. I, 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 I want him to make a way for it. I want him to be El Shaddai in my life. I want him to do it. When, when I think about the goodness of Jesus and, and when I think about the goodness of God and, and all he's done for me, all he's done for you, all he's done for us, I, I can't hold it. God, God's been too good to me. He, he's been good to all of us. He's been good to my family. He, he's been good to people I know all around, even in the trouble that we go through. Yeah. He's been Jehovah Jireh. He's been our provider. Oh, my God. And, and believe me, I've heard some wonderful stories how people, God has been providing for people. And, and you ain't even got to be working. God to still make a way. He, God will do some things even when you think you can't see it. He, he, he'll send somebody and, or he'll do some things that you wasn't even thinking about. And he'll be provider. Listen, I, I was looking at Isaiah chapter 54, verses 5 through 4. It says, surely he took up our pain. And, and, and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was wounded. <laughs> he, was, he was wounded for our transgressions. He, he was bruised for our iniquity, our sin, and the chastisement of our, of our peace was upon him. And guess what? And, and by his stripes, 
guess what we are? <laughs> Y'all know it. We, we healed. It, it was it was nobody but Jesus. It was because of the blood of Jesus that that's how we made a way. That's how He's doing it now. I just keep thinking about the blood of Jesus and what He did. The blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus is, is what's making a way from. See, see what we must understand is that God is not fighting against our lives. He's not. So when we see shootings and stuff uh, in these different cities and states and, and kids die, he's not fighting against our lives. Those kids are going to be all right. I saw a picture the other day, somebody sent it to me and, and it had heaven's doors open and all those kids was going in and they were just as happy as they want to be. Yeah, it looked like a tragedy on our end, but it's a blessing on theirs. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, he's doing some wonderful, wonderful things. Yes, God sits by sometimes. See, this is the same situation that happened with Job. You see, God sits by and he watches on the sideline while Satan seems to have his way with some of us. But, but keep in mind, this is what I like, but keep in mind what God gives instructions about how far Satan can actually go in our lives. He, he he can't just do stuff to us and think he can get away with it. He got instructions on how far he can go because he can't just do what he wants to do because you belong to God. I, I want you to know that you belong to God and God wants others to see him do a great work through you. And even when others think that you must have, have done something wrong, just like Job's friends, they were saying, hey, you had to do something. And they sat around for days and they're like, tell us what you did. Go, go, go on and tell us the story. He's like, I, I, I didn't do nothing. I didn't hurt nobody. Job, Job was like, tell, listen, God does this. He, he, God can, I, I, I didn't say nothing when God was blessing me. But why should I say something now that I'm going through some stuff? I still love him. Yeah. The wife would like curse him and die. No, I'm not doing that. God's been too good to me. I'm telling you the same thing. Even right now, I know you may be sick, but God's been too good. He's going to make a way and he's going to do it through you. And even when others think that you must have done something. And, and, and that you must have did something for why you're going through uh, and, and what you're going through. God says that's not so. Satan is so crafty that he'll even make you think that you did something. No, God just wants everyone to see his glory in your life. He's, he's trying to show somebody. That's why we still telling the story about Job. He didn't do nothing. But we, God got the glory out of his life. See, we like the ending of it, but we don't like to look at the beginning and we don't like the middle part or oh, it seems too hard. No, sometimes we start worrying too much about this package, this, 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 this flesh. But, but we don't take into consideration that, that the inward part is what God's caring about. The spirit that's living inside of us is, is what God is concerned about. He's concerned about this on the inside. This is where we need to fight more and where we need to draw our attention. Listen to me good. God, let my spirit man be stronger than my flesh man. Let me say it again. God, let, let my spirit man be stronger than my flesh man. Let, God, let my spirit man, I heard a preacher say something like eight times this morning. God, let my spirit man be stronger than my flesh man. Wait, wait, what? whatever I see, God, whatever I hear, whatever I say, let the spirit lead me at all times. Yeah. I, I will tell you this. Wake up in the mornings and, and, and proclaim this. When you pray, whatever prayer you pray, and after you pray, tell God, God, now today, let my spirit man be stronger than my flesh man. I should have named, I almost should write a sermon about it. Let my spirit man be stronger than my flesh man. You keep declaring this over your life every time you pray to God and watch how things start to change in your everyday atmosphere, in your life. Watch how things don't, don't bother you like they used to. Or watch how people can't get on your nerve like that. Watch how you start to have better peace, even in the midst of storms all around you. That's because your spirit man <laughs> has started becoming stronger than your flesh man. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I understand that we're, we're going to get weak sometimes, and sometimes our bodies give way to old age. 
and, and sickness. I, 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 I see our kids, they go out, they do their thing, they have a good time, they get dressed up, they put on makeup. It, but old age is coming one day and sickness may even come. But God is saying, why are you trying to work on that yourself? Meaning this flesh, while we're trying to make up everything, have you considered working on the spirit man on the inside? Yeah, I know you want to lose weight. I, I do. I know you want to lose weight. But have you considered to stop committing gluttony? Oh, my God. Which is a sin. Yeah. You, you trying to work out and stop eating. I don't know. Have you just considered stop eating so much, even when you know you full? Me and my wife went and ate breakfast this morning. I could have, I could have ate all my plate, but I was full, uh, so I just had to take it to go with me. I had a good, good, good meal, and it tastes good. But I wasn't gonna sit there and keep eating. That's working on your spirit, man. Not just your your outside body, but it's working on the sin. Yeah, I know that you want to have the best cars and and the nicest house, but have you considered being kind to others? H have you just considered that? Working on your inward man. Yeah, I know you like to dress nice and, and to make yourself look good and make other people look like look at you like and marvel at you because you look so pretty. You look so nice. You work. But see, have you worked on the inside of that dirty, nasty part that's on the inside? Of you? The outside look good, but on the inside, you toe up from the floor. Oh. Yeah. Work on the nasty parts of your life where you where you like to lie and you like to curse others out or you like to be sarcastic with people, even when they ain't did nothing to you or they don't deserve it. This is working on the inside of my spirit, man. Oh, yeah, you look nice. Eh? And every time somebody see you, oh, you, oh, you can sing. Oh, you can play. Oh, you can do that. But they don't know that on the inside of you is some other just nasty mess up. It's rings around the tub in there. Oh, oh, your hands is all black. No, work on the spirit, man. Fight for your life. And the way you do it, you got to work on yourself, not the outside, though. This is where God wants you to do more fighting in your life. Fight to make your spirit man better than your flesh man. And when you do that, this will clean up everything else. Everything else that's going on in, in the inside of you. I don't care if the muscles are going the wrong way, some blood cells are doing work on the spirit man. I don't care what's going on. Think about the spirit man first instead of this flesh. So now your inside will actually be clean and match up to what you're trying to do on the outside that people see. They see you look good on the outside, but the inside is toe up. No, try to match your inside to look better than your outside. Yeah, I, I, I preached this sermon one time uh, about everything has an expiration date. But you just need to keep fighting until that day comes. Or you, I hope you hear me. Oh, yeah, it's going to expire, but you need to keep fighting until the day comes because one day, all of our problems will expire. Yeah. Let me tell you something. All of our sickness will expire. All of our, our, our pain will expire. All of our heartache will expire. All of our suffering will expire. And all of the depression and stress will all go away. And just like all those things will go away, so will this old dirt and bones that we are wrapped in. But until then, guess what you need to do? We will fight and we will win. That's the that's the thing I need you to know. You, not only you, you got to win this thing, it's in us to win. Ephesians 6 and 12, it, it said this, for we wrestle <laughs> not against the flesh and blood, but but we we fight against the principalities and, and, and the powers, against the rulers of darkness of the world, against those spiritual wickedness in high places. That's what, we, and, 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 but get this, get this. But sometimes we are in those high places with our wickedness because of what's on the inside. Yeah. So I like to remind myself that God loves me too much to let me perish. He, he loves me too much to let any of us just die in our sin. God wouldn't allow us to lose in any manner of our lives if we allowed our spirits to lead us. Even when it looks like, like we're losing. I, I, I sit back and I tell myself when I when it looks like I'm losing, I, I go back, I, I go to Philippians chapter 4, 11 through 14. In Philippians 4, 11 and 14. 14 it says not that i speak in respect of want but but i for i learned in whatsoever state i am in therewith to be content 
I, I know both how to abase and I know how to abound. E everywhere and in all things, I'm instructed both to be full and to be hungry, but to abound and to suffer. You know why? And this is what we all know. Verse 13 says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. And yeah. 14 says, notwithstanding, ye have all well done that ye may communicate with my affliction. Well, what does that mean? God, you were there for me in, in my affliction. You you knew about my affliction. You, you, uh, you communicated so many times how you love us and how things will work out for our good. God wants it to, I, so I, I say that sometimes, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. I, I know how, how to live real good. I, I know what it is to eat steak, and I know what it is just to eat some beans. I, I know what it is to eat noodle soup, and I know what it is to eat some spaghetti and good pasta. I know the difference. Yeah, yeah, I know how to both obey and abound. I know how to suffer, and I know how to abound, I know how to be full, and I know how to be hungry. God, God said, listen, but through all that, I can do all things through Christ that strengthen me. Whatever state I am in, I'm going to be content. But while I'm being content, I'm still fighting for my life. <laughs> I'm fighting for my life because God knows your affliction, and you, commit, you communicated it so many times. God here, here it is, here I am I. God says, I hear you, I hear you, I hear you. And, and, and things are going to work out for your good. Yeah. So I read Romans 8 and 28, and this is how I know things will work out for your good. Because Romans 8 and 28 says, and we know that all things work together. <laughs> I don't care what your situation is. I, I know it may seem hard, but they all work together for the good of them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. You have purpose yes. so you have been called because of your purpose so keep fighting for the purpose god has put in you see it, it, it looked like job was losing because he lost so much stuff even he lost some family and, and possessions but god paid attention to how job continued to keep the faith yes. knowing that god would make a way and, and, and here it is today. We're still talking about Job and what, what God did for Job and how how, how he did. It. It, it was crazy, but how he did it was a shock to us. I was like, man, he did lost all that and then came back and, 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 and he just doubled everything he had. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. God has a plan that, that we don't know about. So it's best for us to just keep fighting until the plan comes to fruition. Because God is going to make it clear to us. He's going to show us one day. I, I, I know he has a plan. That's what he was saying in Jeremiah 29 and 11. I know the plans I have for you, for you declares the Lord, plans to prosper you. Yeah. He ain't trying to hurt you and, and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Th this is what God is saying. God knows what he's doing. So, so don't get weary in your well-doing because in, in due season, <laughs> this is what yeah. the Bible said in, in Galatians 6 and 9, it said, you shall reap. If you faint not, don't faint. Don't fall off the side being so frustrated about what's going on. Watch, watch God make a way. Watch him do some wonderful things. Keep fighting. And, and if you have been fighting to make sure that God has his way in your life, then you will prosper. You're going to have hope and a future because of God's plan. I read something else in Jeremiah chapter 30 and 17. It says, but I will restore you to health. Mm -hmm. Let me drink some water right there. All right, let me, let me read it again. Jeremiah 30 and 17, he said, but I will restore you to health and heal your wounds, declares the Lord. I, I will restore you to health and whatever your situation is. Whatever, if it's depression, stress, if it's money problem, I will restore you to health. If it's financial, if it's sickness, if it's family problem, I will restore you to health. If it's marital, if it's kids, I will restore you to health. And I'm going to heal the wounds. Oh, it, it seems like I've been cut up. I walked through a, a brush of thorns, but God said, I'm going to heal you. Because as soon as you come out, the roses are going to be pretty on the other side. Yeah, it seems thorny right now, declares the Lord, but I got you. 
Even in Psalm 30 and 2, it said, Lord, my God, I called to you for help and you healed me. Oh, my God. What? What did you do? It's Psalm chapter 30, verse 2. It said, Lord, my God, I called to you for help and you healed me. It was almost like a surprise. I called you in the eye. I, I couldn't believe you came. What are you talking about? Keep fighting for your life. God yeah. keeps saying, I want to do it. I want to heal your wounds. I want you to make a way. So, so don't be surprised when you call to God and he makes a way for you and he's going to heal you. See, God speaks all through his word that he has a desire to heal us. But, but we just have to declare what his word says and let it come to pass. Sometimes we don't want to declare what God is saying because we don't we don't read it enough. Even even in when things seem like they, they aren't getting any better. That, I'm trying to tell you, even when it looks like they're not getting no better. Watch God bring it to pass. Watch him do the unexpected for us and watch him do what he already expected was going to happen. See, he expected it to happen already. It was us. It seems unexpected. Oh my God, I can't believe it. And, and, and that is victory. He expects victory out of our lives. Oh man, I, I hope I hope you get this. God loves us so much. He wants us to make it. He, he wants us to see us thrive. But sometimes we fall short just because we ain't fighting for our life. We walking through here with too much fear. And the Bible says, fear not. Oh, let me tell you what Revelations 21 and 4 says, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, nor shall there be any more pain for the former things have passed away. <laughs> Remember I told you everything has an expiration date. All that other stuff that you worried about, listen, it's going to be gone. But it, you ain't got to worry about that. Quit stressing about it. God doesn't want to see us cry. He doesn't want us living in sorrow. He doesn't want us living in pain. Those are things that Satan likes to see us go through. But God says those, those former things are passed away. Someday soon, God says you won't have to deal with that no more. Remember when, when see, because we the Bible says that the, 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 the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But what did Jesus say? He said, but I, <laughs> I come that you might have life. And I, I want you to have it more abundantly. Like I said, Satan likes to see us go through things, but God doesn't. God doesn't want to see us crying and he don't want us living in sorrow. But while you're going through, why, why, why you are being tested and why Satan is trying to seem like he's having way. He, God is saying, I don't want you to give up the fight. I got you. He, he can only go as far as I tell him. I won't put too much on you that you can't bear. Just continue to seek God and do, do, do what Psalm 6 and 2 said. It says, have mercy on me, Lord, for I am faint. Heal me. Lord, for my bones are in agony. Oh, my God. That's speaking to somebody because I know somebody dealing with some agony in their bones. Listen, ha have mercy on me, Lord, for I, I, I am faint. I, I feel weak. I feel like I'm going to fall out. Uh, Tabitha, I feel like I feel like I got to throw up my hands. I, I'm not going to make it. I, I feel like I can't make it. Heal me. Lord, for my bones are in agony. Yeah. All I can tell you is ask God for it. And, and, and have true faith, true faith, and watch, and, and he will hear you, and he'll heal you. Now, I'm going to tell you one more scripture, and I, I'm going I'm to get out of here, because uh, it seemed like I was fussing at you about fighting for your life, and, and in a way, I, I, I'm fussing at all of us, because we have to fight for our life. We got to trust God. We ha have to have the faith. We got to have it. And we got to work that. That's what James was talking about when he said faith without works is dead. Listen, fight for your life. Get up, do something. You know, don't, don't just sit there and, 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 and waddle in your anguish. Now, God is saying to us in Proverbs 4, 20 through 23, it says, my son, now that you heard all of this, pay attention to what I say. <laughs> Turn your ears to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life. Oh, my God. What is life? And he, he's talking about his words. To those who find them and help to those, to the one who hold body. If you get God's word, his, 
his 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 word is going to heal you. His, his word is going to deliver you and bring help to your whole body. And above all else, this is what it says: guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. What are you, what are you saying, preacher? Everything you do from your, your mind, what you speak, what you see, everything is flowing from your heart. I'm telling you, clean up that inside. Quit worrying about this right now. Quit worrying about it. Hey, I, I understand it, 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 it's it's bothering you, but listen, this is a good time to work on the inside. Look at yourself and say, God, what what can I do? Make my spirit man stronger than my flesh man i i don't want to live this way uh, all my life i don't want to be in this kind of pain i, I don't want to deal with this but why i'm down right now and work on the inside of me so that I, my faith will be stronger that when i see you god you will say serving well done whenever that time comes but god heal me now so i have a testimony i'm telling you fight for your life yeah. i'm telling you that if you do that then you will win there's no way that you will, will lose. There's no way that you can lose in whatever the circumstances, whatever the situation. Mm -hmm. It's no way that you can lose. I'll read the scripture one more time and we'll leave. Isaiah chapter 38, 15 through 17. But what can I say? He has spoken to me and he himself has done this. Mm -hmm. God has done it. I will walk humbly all my years because of this anguish of my soul. Lord, by such things people live, and, and my spirit finds life in them too. You restored me to health and let me live. Surely it was for my benefit that I suffered such anguish. In your love, you kept me from the pit of destruction. That's the most part. You kept me from destruction, God. You kept me from sin. You have put all my sins behind your back. And I thank God for it. Thank you, God. I appreciate it. Even, even for all of us, I thank God for it. Listen. I want to play, play a quick song for you before I give give uh, the last words. But let me tell you, the reason we preach these kind of sermons is because of Romans chapter 10 and verse 9. It says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, then guess what? Thou shalt be saved. And I, I want you to know that even, even when you get saved, that doesn't mean all your problems are going away. That's not what that means. Yeah. That, as a matter of fact, it, more may come, but because of your faith and your strength and because of the way you fight, you're going to come out of it. Mm -hmm. Be better. Work on that inside. Keep in mind what I said. Lord, every, every day you pray, every time you pray, Lord, let my spirit, man, be stronger than my flesh, man. God, let my... Let my spirit, man, be stronger than my flesh, man. Let me not worry about everything or what people say or uh, how people look at me. I don't want to be like everybody else. I want to be like you, God. Let my spirit, man. It's a reason that Jesus left. <laughs> the spirit is with us. He's a comforter. Oh, but some of us don't use him as the comforter. He's a comforter. Yeah, he's a way maker. He helps. Mm -hmm. So let your spirit, man, be stronger than your flesh, man. I, I I, I love the Lord. I, I want you to be saved. I want you to be healed. I want you to hear what God has to say and fight for your life. Can I play a song for you real quick? Th this song is called We Will Win. Uh, and, and it's by, it, this song does not belong to me. Uh, so I, I want you to hear it real quick. It, it, it's by Vincent Buchanan in Sounds of Victory. We will fight and we will win. <laughs> Everybody touch your hands right here. We will fight and we will win. Come on, that's what he said. We will fight. And we will win. And we will win. We speak victory. We speak victory to every child we win. We are overcomers. We are overcomers. By the blood of the Lamb. By the blood of the Lamb. No longer defeated. No longer defeated. But we're winners now.
That's it. I, I, I can play that all day. Sometimes I ride down the road, listen to that, talking about how we're going to win. Listen, uh, let me first tell you, if you want to be a blessing to church, you can give to our cash app. It's money sign, higher ground, CC. Again, money sign, higher ground, CC. I, I thank you for listening. Listen, today is a special day. Um, uh, today is me and my wife's anniversary. And uh, I told you, come here, Tabitha, come on over here. Come. She, uh, oh, I know she did. She was shaking her head. Y'all can't see that, but she was shaking her head to me like, no, she wasn't. Come on over here. Say hi to the people. And she looking at the camera too, like, like, no, I'm not coming. Come on, say hi. That's it. You want to sit in my lap? No. Yeah, come on, get in here. Hi. Nice. Yeah, it's our anniversary, y'all. Mm -hmm. Text her something and say happy anniversary. Thank you. God gonna bless you. You want to give a kiss? Give a kiss. <laughs> that's fine too that's fine too that's see but i thank god it's it, it's a wonderful day and and even even in marriage you, got, you gotta have your fighting for your life everything ain't gonna be hunky dory stuff gonna happen but you keep fighting and, and hope god will make a way and that's what faith is about you just try to transition out of that but i thank you right now for uh for listening today. Can I pray for you before we leave? And, and, and keep in mind, I want you to fight for your life. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you right now. Thank you for your word today, God. Uh, encourage all of our spirits to fight for who you are and, and who you are in us, God. And we ask that our spirit man's be stronger than our flesh man. So God, every day we wake up and whatever we see, God, you work through us to, for things to be better, God, and, and things to work out better even in our lives. But start with us first. Start with the inward man, God so that we're not looking at so many other things, worried about so many things. We know you're able to make a way. We know you're Jehovah Jireh, God. We know you're our provider. We know that you can do wonderful things. So keep continuing to do that, God. Watch over our families. Watch over our kids. Watch over our finances, God. In every single circumstance in our lives, make a way, God. We appreciate you. We love you. And we're going to keep fighting, God, for what you have put inside of us and, and working on the inside of us. We thank you now. We love you. And we praise you. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank y'all so much. Listen, y'all have a great day. Enjoy the rest of your day and enjoy your weekend. If you got time, come back Tuesday and, and just get refreshed on this fight for your life. Amen. All right. I love y'all. Y'all have a good day and we'll talk later.